Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 6 in the how to program in C Sharp course. I'm really sorry that it's been so long since the last one, but I've been really busy with some important projects, um, so I haven't really had time to do uh, that many videos. But no, but seriously, cool stuff coming. Um, so in today's video what we're going to do uh, is we're going to take a look at what is called for loops which will greatly expand on what we can do with our code. So important lesson today and uh, yeah let's just stick right into it. If my voice sounds a little weird it's because I've just been sick and um, yeah so that might come through on the recording. So as always I've opened up Xamarin Studio and uh, if you have any questions throughout this video you can head over to forum.brackies.com so if you find this code here to be a bit difficult to understand or whatever uh, just head over there and uh, many people including me are ready to answer your questions. So first off I'm just going to answer the uh, question that I had or the uh, challenge that I gave you in the last video which was to uh, create uh, this program where you need to multiply two numbers and then give you uh, give the user responses based on just how well you did. So first off, we have different um, random uh, messages for when the user answers correctly. And then we have different messages for uh, depending on how close he gets to answering correctly. So let me just quickly walk you through this code. This is not going to take too long. So as always, we are creating a, a random number generator and we are generating two random numbers. Then we are prompting the user to, uh, uh, to write out the answer to these questions. Uh, and we are collecting the answer in a int uh, variable. Then we are checking if it's correct. And if it is, we are printing out uh, some different responses based on another random number. And if it's not correct, we are taking the difference, which I just called def, storing it in an integer value. And you can see that I simply take the answer and subtract, subtract the correct answer. So this is the user answer. And this is, of course, the solution. Num1 times num2 should hopefully give us the solution. And then I'm wrapping this in, an ma in a math.absolute statement. And what this does, it simply converts everything inside these two parentheses, so which means everything in here. It simply takes that and takes the absolute value of that, meaning that if it's a negative number, it's simply going to uh, multiply with minus 1. So this number will always be positive. So now we have the uh, absolute value, which is our difference. And we're saying that if it's simply equal to 1, we are going to write so close. If it's more or, or less than or equal to 10, we're going to write, you can do better than that. Or if it's more than 10, we can then write, you are not even close. Cool, so now we can just go ahead and delete most of this code. I'm simply going to keep the main function and all of the uh, class and namespace stuff. And then the console.rekey. Now, what I'm going to uh, go ahead and do here is simply show you what a for loop can do. So let's say that we want to print out uh, some numbers, each on a separate line. So let's say we want to print out the numbers 1 through 10 on uh, each on a separate line in the console. So what we would do here is we would write 4, and then we would write int i uh, equals 1, i as is less than or equal to 10, i plus plus and then inside of the brackets that we are now going to make here and simply type after me right now and I explain exactly what this means in a sec inside of these two brackets we're then going to write console dot write line and then we are simply going to give it i so if we go ahead and hit uh, play right now you can see that it says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So let me just explain you quickly why this is doing just uh, the thing that it is. So a for loop is basically a way to iterate through to do something a certain number of times. And uh, we do this by first making a variable. Here we're calling it i. 
and we are setting it equal to a starting number. Let's, in this case, we're setting it equal to one. Then we are saying that we want to do whatever's inside these brackets as long as this condition is met. So as long as i is less than or equal to 10, we want to execute this line here. And then right here is what is called the increment or decrement stage. And this is where uh, we put in what we want to happen with i after the loop has gone through. So after we've uh, we've uh, written out uh, the line, it it will then increment, which means add on just one to the i here. So this is basically the same as if we just leave that out, and then down here, whoops, we still need the parent uh, the semicolon there. I'm pretty sure. And then we just down here say i plus equals one. That's exactly the same. It's simply to make sure that i doesn't just stay 1 and it will never reach 10. It's to make sure that it's incremented so it, we add 1 onto i every single time we go through the loop. And then what we can do inside of the two brackets is we can then use i for different things. So now we can just, we have complete access to this i. So in this case, we're simply writing it out on a line. So again, with all that in mind, we are creating a for loop, which means that we can do an action a certain number of times. We are creating a variable called i and setting it equal to 1. We're saying that we want this to run as long as i is not above 10. And then we are simply incrementing i uh, after each iteration. So now let's hit play. And again, you can see that that is indeed what's happening. We have one, two, three, and it's just incrementing each time all the way through up to 10. Cool. So let's say we wanted to do something more with this. Uh, we could go ahead and set int i equal to, let's say, zero. And we could make this maybe run uh, up to, so let's say just i is less than, and then 100. This is another very common way to write for loops that instead of starting int i at 1, we start it at 0, and then we simply say that as long as i is less than 100, so this is going to print out, again, 100, but it's uh, different numbers, but it's going to start at 0. And this is a very common way of thinking about for loops, the way that we start at zero, because that's what the computer uh, often does. And we're going to see that when we work with lists and arrays, because then we're going to use for loops to access different parts of arrays. So let's say we have a list of students. We can use for loops to go through each student represented by an index, which is here shortened by i, and we can access their information. So you're going to see that in a later video. So what I want you to do until next video is to create a for loop yourself that will print out all the even numbers and only the even numbers from 1 to until 100. So in order to do this, you're going to need a basic for loop and also, you need to know how to determine whether or not a number is even or uneven. And the way you do this programmatically is say if you have two numbers, let's say 2 and 2, and uh, you want to check if uh, this one here is uh, even, what we do is we use this percentage sign. And uh, this is a math operator just like minus plus or division. Uh, but what this percentage sign will do is it will return the remainder of a division. So it's going to say 2 divided by 2. That's completely even to do. So that's going to simply return 0. So uh, if this was not an even number, let's say this was 3, this is not going to return uh, this is not going to return zero. So simply take the value that we are checking, let's call this x, and use the percentage sign, which will return again the remainder of a division, 
and the one the the number that we want to divide by is going to be two, and then we can simply check if that is equal to to uh, is equal to zero. Well, then indeed the number is even. So with that in mind, try and see if you can go ahead and create this uh, for loop. Or if not, again, head over to forum.brankies.com where I, among many others, are waiting to answer your questions. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.